All right, let's go ahead and get started. All right. Football fans, welcome to the Week 5 NFL Recap Roundtable. Today we got uh, Bassem on the call here, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started, and uh, maybe folks will jump on later, but we're going to go ahead and get started with the first game, the London game. The New York Giants beat the Green Bay Packers 27-22. to This was the second uh, consecutive London game, and uh, this was a shocker for me, I got to tell you. Uh, Giants coach Brian Dayball, this is his first time as a coach, and to go into to London to beat the Packers, uh, he's had many surprising wins this year so far, and he just seems to push the right buttons and he maximizes the little talent he has. They don't have Sterling Shepard, they don't have Kadarius Toney, they're missing a bunch of people with injuries, but they still beat Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Did you see anything in this game? Did you see any highlights? Yeah, I saw actually uh, the end of the game. And uh, looks like Saquon is starting to get back into his form. Um, you know, after kind of having most of last year off, uh, looks like he looked pretty good this year. And actually, Daniel Jones surprisingly looked pretty good as well. Uh, at the end, I saw, you know, when Aaron Rodgers had those two passes batted down, uh, it almost looked, there's something about, that at the end, the look on his face, it seemed like he didn't care so much. I don't know, like, he didn't he didn't have that kind of anger that he was losing to the Giants like he should have. So I thought, I thought that was a little weird. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he seems to be frustrated. If you saw also his post-game uh, press conference, he was talking about how there were some negative attitudes in the locker room, talking about how they knew that they were, they were going to lose or they weren't uh, motivated to continue to play and... Um, uh, there's definitely some issues with Aaron Rodgers and some of his teammates, some of the young teammates. He's working with a lot of rookies this year in terms of his receivers and on the defensive side as well. Uh, yeah, there seems to be something going on there. He needs to get into the locker room and, and, and have conversations with them. But you're right. Yeah, there seems to be something going going on with Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Some so. apathy in his face towards the end, even when he had that the chance to, to take the game and he uh, had it batted down twice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I don't know. When when people are in London, I don't know if there's something else going on. He has his mind on something else or, or what. But, uh, yeah, it was definitely a shocking game. But uh, we'll see. I, I, I didn't think the Giants were legit before this game, to be honest with you. But this is their, this is a really, really legit win. I think they're like 4-1 four four, four now. So we'll see where they go from here. All right, moving on to the next game. The New Orleans Saints beat the Seattle Seahawks 39 to 32. Um, so basically, I'm just gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna talk for a bit about this game. I have a bunch of notes about this. Yeah. So the Seattle offense looked really really good, led by Geno Smith. He was very impressive. He's very impressive as in, in his ability to to avoid interceptions. I have to say, when something isn't there, he'll throw it away, or sometimes he'll even take the sack, which is. According to Pete Carroll, their coach, a lot better than an interception. Um, but what he's getting better at is being precise with his throws. So especially to, to lock it, he had one of the best throws I've ever seen today into triple coverage. He dropped it into him, uh, and the defenders behind him, the Saints defenders behind him, crashed into each other, like all three of them, or at least two of them, and it looked like they got injured. Um, DK Metcalf, he had, a, he had a touchdown throw to him. And he had a second touchdown throw to him that was negated because of a hold on the uh, offensive line. But DK Metcalf, I have to say, he also dropped a, a, a touchdown pass and he fumbled again. It seems like every week this guy fumbles. He has incredible raw talent uh, and that's always been known. But the reason why he dropped into the draft, I think he got drafted in the second or third round, it start, it, it's really showing because... He has raw talent, but technique-wise, he's not he's not been improving. He he is what he was to to begin his career, and it doesn't seem like he's securing the ball, becoming a better catcher, doing all these things. He's just living off of his talent, which I think is is um, really a shame because his his ceiling is very very high, but he's not really reaching it. I don't think. Um, the only reason why this game was close was because of the terrible defense and special teams by the Seahawks. I mean, again, they give up 39 points. Uh, Jason Miser kicker mix, missed an extra point. 
their punter, instead of punting it inside their own 20, tried to run for a first down when that wasn't even, you know, Pete Carroll didn't even make that call. To do something like that, to, to give the other team a red zone drive immediately, was, I, I'd never seen that before. It was terrible. The Seahawks defense was was absolutely pathetic. You know, the, the Saints didn't have Michael Thomas. They didn't have Jarvis Landry. Chris Olave got concussed halfway through the game. And they still, you know, the Saints, all they were doing was running. And they couldn't stop it. They couldn't stop Taysom Hill. They couldn't stop uh, Alvin Kamara. Even when they stacked the line, uh, they couldn't stop him. And then when Taysom Hill would get to the outside, instead of trying to tackle him, they would try to punch the ball out, which is bad defensive technique. And uh, I would say the only bright spot for uh, the Seahawks defense is they have a rookie uh, cornerback, Thawdit Woolen. His name is Thawdit Woolen. He already has three interceptions in his first five games, and he has a pick six. So he's the only bright spot. And he I'll had just, a fumble recovery too, sir, didn't he? Yeah, I think he had a fumble recovery. He's the only bright spot of all the 11 people on the uh, on the defense. He's the only bright spot. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just say this. Um, and you can say your opinion. I know you're, you're a big Chris Olave guy, and I think he's a great receiver. But the difference in this game was seven points or six points. And that Chris Olave touchdown was originally called uh, an incomplete pass because he didn't complete the, the process of the catch. And that has been the rule in the NFL, that if you don't go to the ground and, and maintain possession regardless of what happens, I mean, it looks like he was like wobbly, that, that's not a touchdown. So when you call it on the field, not a touchdown, and then you go to review it, you have to have clear evidence. You have, have to have overwhelming evidence for you to overturn it. There's no way they had that, but they still overturned that, and that was the difference in the game. And... I don't know. I mean, what, what did you think? Did you see any highlights of this game? Did you see this game? I, I saw that one specific play that you're talking about with Olave. Yeah, yeah that it didn't look really look like a touchdown to me. Yeah, in the replay form, uh, he might have had possession, touched two toes in, and then as he was going down and hit the ground, and the ball came out. You know, his, his head slammed against the ground. Uh, so that was that was a probably lucky one for for New Orleans. I thought Taysom Hill was was the game changer in the game. Just ran all over uh, the D. But Geno Smith's two bombs, those two touchdowns. One of them was a guy double covered. The other one was triple covered to Tyler Lockett. Very impressive. I think Geno Smith uh, is rising up to the occasion now and taking this opportunity and actually proving that he's not just a college QB or a backup QB. He's he actually has you know a shot to win games here. Um, it was a tough loss for the Seahawks, for sure. I think I think they probably deserve this game. If it wasn't for Taysom Hill's trickery and um, his slitheriness and kind of you know taking uh, Seattle's D, um, you know by surprise sometimes, so. then Seattle probably would have had that. Um, but yeah, no, I think a, a tough loss for Seattle for sure. But New Orleans really needed this win to get get some confidence back because they have a stacked team and they just have not been winning so uh you know great for new orleans tough loss for for seattle but i think they're going to come back next week and and improve on on what they did and uh and win yeah absolutely well said uh and Taysom hill i will say he while he plays quarterback i think that's his position they also put him at tight end and that's what he is also in like fantasy they have him at tight end but then he also, of course, plays running back because he read options and then goes and, and runs. But then he also plays special teams. So he <laughs> he does everything. There's I, I can't think of a single player that's ever been like this guy that does all these things. And also he'll come out sometimes and catch passes. Um, he's a player like we've never seen before. He yeah, is I think the, ultimate the Saints are really lucky to have a guy like him. Big he's, time. I mean, he's the game changer. He won the game for him. By Big far. time. He's like a, he's like a, somebody you create in Madden, you know, like this mythical player. Like that that's what he is, you know, pretty much. Uh, last thing I'll say about this game is uh, Rashad Penny got injured. Um, it looks like he fractured his tibia. He he might be out for the season. And wow. just just a quick note on this guy. So Seahawks drafted him, I think, four and a half years ago. So basically, the rookies are on four year contracts. And he did nothing for three and a half years. He was injured. He did nothing. Even when he got a chance to play, he didn't do anything. And then last year, in the last you know six games of the season, he was the best running back in the league. And so when they got a chance to sign him, because you have to make a decision as a team, are you going to sign him to an extension? 
he earned that extension in the last six games of his four years there. And they paid him. And now he's reverting back, of course. I mean, what do you expect? He's going to revert back to who he, he's always been, which is an injury-prone guy, uh, unfortunately. So down he goes again, and now we're going to have to rely on Kenneth Walker, who looked okay today. He had a big run, but Pete Carroll, you know, he, he relies on, you know, ever since college, you know, he relies on the R Reggie Bush and Lenda White. He, he always wants those, those two people to be in there. So, um, unfortunately, uh, it, it, Seattle is going to suffer because of that, big time. Tough loss for Seattle. I mean, he had some uh, some big runs the last couple of weeks. I know. He was showing a lot of promise. I What's agree. up, Omar? I agree. Yeah. I don't know how's it going, man? Yo, how's it going, Omar? We just right, we just finished up uh, the the Seattle game. Um, uh, you're lucky you missed that that rant. I went on a, a pretty big rant on there. Oh no, no, no! I'm unlucky that I missed that. Yeah, man. No, that's. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll we'll move on from that. So now we're on to the uh, Los Angeles Chargers beat the Cleveland Browns thirty to twenty eight. Uh, I'll start by saying um, Austin Eckler, one hundred seventy three yards on just sixteen carries. And there was there was one of the runs that I saw that I could not believe the defensive back caught up to him because he looked like he was gone for sure. Uh, so he he should have added a second touchdown to uh, his total today. But um, to me, again, Austin Eckler. He won it last week. He won it this week. Yeah, I think uh, Jacoby Brissett had a a better game than I than I thought. I thought at the end he he was driving hard and, and went towards the end. I think he threw a pick. At the, at the very end when he – they could have had a game-tying touchdown, right, or a game-tying – how much did they lose by? Two. two. Lost, lost by two, yeah, even the field goal. But he, <coughs> I just – I felt bad for him at the end. I thought he he had a good drive. He had been playing a good game. Uh, Nick Chubb, also another big day, 134, two touchdowns. Um, I, I thought the Browns deserved this game, to be honest. But the Chargers – yeah, Eckler, another another big game by Eckler. But, uh, yeah, I, I thought the Browns played, played pretty well. Yeah, this was um, – <coughs> I think both teams had a really strong running game today. That's kind of like the story of the game to me. Like Eckler for the Chargers and then Chubb for the for the Browns. And like I said in the chat, I, 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 I think Chubb is, like, so underrated. I, like, I think he's legit, like – in the RB1 conversation in the whole league. Like, you know, he's constantly, like, just churning out, like, five yards of carry, like, year after year. And it's, I think it's probably because he plays for the Browns that people don't realize it. But, yeah, man, he's he's consistently really good. So that was kind of, like, what I took away, that it was a strong running game from both from both teams today. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. And um, I'm not sure, to, sure about his injury history. I, I feel like... He, he does get injured sometimes, not as much as some of the other top backs, but you're right. He's very, very consistent. And the way he runs also is just, like, relentless. It's just, like, you know, like, he, he just can't be stopped. It's, like, a very impressive running style. Yeah. Um, I'll say also another thing about the Chargers. So Mike Williams at 134 yards as well. <laughs> and I, I see him getting better every week. I thought for, for there was a time where Mike Williams, I thought he might have been um, not living up to the hype, but... He seems to be, be getting better at like high pointing the ball, which is a really really important thing for somebody like a tall receiver like him. So he continues to get better. I, I agree about the Brissett point. He seems to be a, like a very tough, gritty quarterback. He threw that pick in, in the end of the game, and unfortunately, you know they, they didn't pull it out. But he he, he is he is a gritty player. That he made, got him twenty eight points. But I'm convinced if Cle if Cleveland had Deshaun Watson this whole year. Uh, there's there's a possibility they could be five and zero because they have a great great offense. I know you hate to hear this, Alma, but Amari Cooper is playing very very well, and you know as well as Nick Chubb and and, and Kareem Hunt and even Donovan Peoples Jones they have a good line. They're really good. No, oh, yeah, I I mean, I'm I'm happy for Coop. Like I I knew, you know, guys who are these elite route runners, these tech these tacticians, you know, who are so technically sound you can plug them in almost anywhere and they're always going to be successful because he's always open. Like, you know, that one, the touchdown that he caught, he, he cooked JC Jackson. Like he, you know, that double move, the little in and out going the other way. 
and I, I think you know I'm not I'm not surprised uh, that he's doing well. Um, but yeah, I, I think you know, I think if they had Watson, I, I think that this team would definitely be one of the top seeds in the conference. And you know, with the way they're playing, maybe they'll still be in contention once he eventually you know is able to play. So very possible, very possible. Yeah, I mean, what a what a brutal. Lo- I just. It was in Cleveland, and those fans were, you know, because they had so many years of such bad teams. So to see them excited and actually have a good team, and then to see that guy, he could have, that kick at the end could have won the game for them. So to see that miss, uh, it, yeah, it was pretty brutal. But we'll we'll see how they how they how they do as the uh, the season goes on. Next Sean game. Watson's coming back what not, not week after next? No, week? no, 12, know, week like twelve. The or 13. Oh, wait, it went from what, six games to how many? To 11, games? I think. 12 games. 12 or 11. Out of 12. Yeah. 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 So yeah, they, tough. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we'll see if they can, uh, like Omar said, if they can keep it uh, competitive until he comes back. So next game, the New England Patriots uh, blank the Detroit Lions 29 nothing. Uh, the New England defense, I think, is really rounding in the form that we expected them to. And, you know, they, they and Belichick really feast on bad teams. But the ironic thing is, as bad as Detroit's defense has been, their offense has been one of the best offenses in the league. They're still missing DeAndre Swift. They're still missing DJ Chark. Amon Ross St. Brown came back and played today. I'm not sure how much he did. But... Um, to blank a team like that in, in the NFL, um, very impressive. Whenever you can do something like that, this guy Ramondre Stevenson had a had a day today. First time I hear his name, really. Had he had he even been playing much this year? He'd been the backup to to Damian Harris, but yeah. it, because Damian Harris got injured, it looks like he's taken over that backfield. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jared Goff just had a horrible game. Yeah. Absolutely horrible. Yeah. Jamal Williams also did nothing. Yeah, they, the Lions just completely fl- fell flat on their face against Bailey Zappi. I don't know how they lost to Bailey Zappi yeah. the way they did. Um, yeah, pretty embarrassing for the Lions. Yeah. One thing I'll mention also, uh, Matt Patricia used to be the uh, – so Matt Patricia started with the uh, the Patriots, uh, defensive coordinator, and then he got hired by the Lions. He was the Lions head coach for I think like three years or two years, and then he got quickly fired. And then Bill Belichick hired him back, so this was like a big revenge game for, um, for Matt Patricia. And then also, I think there's something about how the Detroit Lions are still paying Matt Patricia because in his contract it said as long as you don't get a coordinator position, then you can continue to get paid. So Bill Belichick has given him like a, a special assistant position instead of a coordinator position. <laughs> So the Detroit Lions can continue to pay him. Wow. So terrible day for the Detroit Lions. Terrible, terrible day. All right. So we'll move right along to the uh, New York Jets beating the Miami Dolphins 40 to 17. A shocking, shocking outcome. Teddy Bridgewater, who's already the second string, got injured very early in this game. And all I'll say is Miami on their third string quarterback against. Uh, 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 Robert Saleh defense is a bad combination. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, Brees Hall also had a hell of a day. Some really strong runs. I know that was a guy that you were talking about way in the beginning in, in the in the drafts portion of the season. Didn't oh, yeah. know much about him until you mentioned him, but I think he's he has a, a pretty bright outlook. Amazing. Strong yeah. Run. Leading leading receiver and rusher. Absolutely. Uh, first rookie drafted in the NFL draft out of Ohio State. Um, really, really good player. You know, fantasy wise, like you said, I think he had a hundred yards receiving and like almost hundred yards uh, rushing. But uh, Michael Carter is a damn touchdown vulture because Brees Hall does all the work, and then Michael Carter comes on the one yard line. And then took two touchdowns away from Brees Hall. Brees Hall easily could have had four he touchdowns today. Like he, did a, he did all the work. Exactly. And he was like dancing. He was doing mocking Jalen Waddle with his little penguin dance. And, and the, 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 the ironic thing is, Michael Carter is the smaller back, but they're giving him goal line work. 
which doesn't make any sense to me. I, I don't know. I, they're just giving Brees Hall a breather, I guess. But, um, yeah, again, you know, Jets got like a big pick six in this game that really kind of shifted the momentum when Brees Hall was – sorry, when Bridgewater was replaced by the uh, the, the rookie uh, quarterback. Um, and the main conclusion is to me – you continue to see Robert Saleh being a great, great coach. And he can, there was a period last year where I didn't recognize him because when he was in San Francisco, actually he started with Seattle and then he went to San Francisco and became the defensive coordinator. He was always, always really, really hyped on the sideline, going crazy. He was always bald and you see like these bulging veins out of his head, you know, going crazy. And then last year with the Jets, when they were doing bad, it was like, he was just like so sullen. This year, he's like, he's got it back, and um, they're winning games they shouldn't win in ways they shouldn't win them. I mean, 40 to 17 against Miami, that's very, very impressive. Yeah, I did see him running back and forth with that play card, just uh, swinging from his head. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Looking amazing. For him. Yeah. Salah. Salah, yeah. Representing the auto. There we go. Houston Texans beat the Jacksonville Jaguars 13 to 6. Um, again, I'm going to keep saying it. Uh, Damian Pierce continues to look really, really good. Had an amazing run in the fourth quarter. You got to check it out if you didn't see it. He broke all these tackles. and I saw and it. You saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a Damian Pierce owner too. You're a Damian Pierce truther like me. Um, yeah, I didn't, I, I, didn't, I didn't realize how strong he was. But, I mean, he was breaking tackles. And it wasn't just that one run. That was kind of like the highlight. But the way he was running just in general was very tough and powerful, which – uh, I didn't see it coming, but yeah, he looked really good. Amazing, taking a lot, a lot of hits, like strong hits, and that's the, that's the thing. And I'm gonna say this just with with rookie running backs, and the same thing with Brees Hall, and the same thing with these other guys. When you got a rookie running back that hasn't taken a lot of damage in the NFL, they're more likely to withstand these big hits early in their career. That's what he's doing. That's what Brees Hall is doing. That's what I'm hoping Ken Walker does um, with, with the Seahawks now that Penny's out. Um, I'll say also Derek Stingley, Houston's. Uh, Rookie first pick had uh, two passes defense. He had an end zone interception, and he was everywhere. He was everywhere today. Um, Nico Williams also had a really amazing catch. That's uh, that's AR's boy. Um, and uh, you know, I, I thought Trayvon Walker, the uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars guy, um, he had kind of a punk play like late in this game against Davis Mills after the the uh, he threw him to the ground really violently after the the whistle was already called dead. Probably some frustration by by him that his offense couldn't really do anything, um, and the Texans have beaten the Jaguars. I heard the statistic nine straight times. Wow! Another thing I noticed too, and I was, I was watching some of it, uh, the stands were barren. Even though even when it was a close game, like in the third quarter, it was like six six, which you know, horrible game. But there was like no one in the stands. I don't know if people have given up on Jacksonville or they thought. When they saw Houston as the opponent, another kind of crappy team, no one wanted to come, or or, is that, or that might just be how it is in Jacksonville. They don't really care too much for the Jaguars, but I thought that was uh, a little odd uh, compared to other other stadiums. But it was it was barren. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, I don't know if it has to do with some of the the weather stuff they've had, or just apathy for the team, or what exactly. But um, no, absolutely. Yeah, no, it was. Uh, it was crazy, and who, I mean, I thought Jacksonville was going to be a lot better than this. I mean, I picked them to win this game, and I, I, you know, I was very surprised that they only put up six points, especially against the Texans. But you know, uh, this is a divisional game. Divisional games very hard to call. Very hard to call. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence also just keeps disappointing. Two yeah. picks, no touchdowns, and just a lot of. I don't know. He, just, he doesn't. He's got to pick it up. Yeah. Especially against a team like Houston. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, we'll see. Their, receivers, their, first, their first win, right? Yeah, Their right. first win. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll see these receivers. I mean, he, he always locks in on Zay Jones. I think Evan Ingram is a pretty good receiver, but uh, they, they are lacking, I, I would say, a little bit. And he's kind of lacking as a quarterback. I agree. But on to the next game. Tampa Bay Bucks beat the Atlanta Falcons 21-15. to um, You know, I'll say that the, Brady's to, the, the Brady to Evans connection is very, very like that, – that's the bread and butter of this offense to me. Um, the refs at the end of this game gave Tom Brady a phantom roughing the passer call, which was absolutely egregious. And they had to come out after the game and try to explain this away, the referees. But, I mean, this was when Atlanta was in the throes of their 
fourth quarter comeback, which they've done before. They did against the Rams. They do against a lot of these big teams. Um, but to, to, to make that kind of call, it's very, very, very suspicious to, to make that kind of call that late in the game as Atlanta is coming back. I will say I think Atlanta, with the little amount of talent that they have to be able to stay in a lot of these games, their, their coach, Arthur Smith, I think that they're a very well-coached team. But they just wait too long to come back in the game. They, you know, I mean, they were down, what was it, like 21 nothing. They came back 21-15. And then it was just this uh, this Brady uh, phantom roughing the passer that uh, that stopped their comeback. Yeah, that was, um, that was probably, I mean, I think it sounds like hyperbole, but I don't think it is. That's probably the worst rough the pastor call I think I've ever seen in my life. Um, and there was another one in the Cowboys game, um, I think towards the end of the game. But I think what makes this one stand out is, you know, it, it's almost like you can't touch some of these guys when they get to a certain point, right? It's like, oh, it's Brady. We have to protect Brady, which is fine to an extent, but not when you start like skewing the rules so like you know that that call along with maybe like a couple others should be reviewable because i can understand if you want to make the argument that in the heat of the moment oh maybe it looks a certain way like on the field from the from from the official's point of view but when it's so egregious you know when it's so egregious i think you know it has to at least be reviewable to some to some degree absolutely and when it's that like pivotal a moment in the game you know what i mean i mean they had all the momentum i mean these these falcons it's like they rope a dope for like three and a half quarters and then they come back and then it's like a sneak attack but you know they tried to say that that the defender threw him to the ground he didn't throw him to the ground i mean that's like like literally like what can the also can the defender do you can't hit him in the face with your hand you can't hit him in the face with your uh with your head you can't like drive him into the ground uh, he just like kind of placed them onto the ground, and that explanation yeah. was was absolutely terrible. Um, something needs to happen to those to, to those refs, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, they escape with the win. So, so anyway, yeah. Minnesota Vikings beat the uh, Chicago Bears 29-22. Uh, Justin Jefferson remains on another level in terms of getting open. This guy just continues to just be able to like outmaneuver people and get open. Uh, Kirk Cousins started off 17 for 17. Um, and I'll just say this, and I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys go. But after the first half, this is what I had noted. Uh, Montgomery is the best offensive weapon for the team. Second is Khalil Herbert. Uh, third is a bunch of defense, uh, offensive linemen. Uh, fourth is the water boy. Fifth is Darnell <laughs> Mooney. Uh, sixth is the, is the athletic trainer. And seventh is Justin Fields. Uh, but I have to say, I had to revise it when the second half came because I have to admit, he made some good plays, not only as a runner, which he basically is, but uh, he, he made some really good passes to Cole Komet. And then uh, Mooney's one-handed catch was spectacular. What did you yeah, guys think? Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I have to eat my soup before it gets cold. Yeah, 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 go but, for it, go um, for it. Um, yeah, the thing that, uh, bro, 1 p.m. Kirk Cousins is like <laughs> an elite MVP quarterback. Like, it's like so Crazy. weird. Like, he was, like you said, he was 17 for 17, franchise record. They're like rolling, like they're looking like, you know, like, like world beaters in the beginning. And you put that... In contrast, you compare it to how he looked on Monday night, right? I think it was, I don't remember if it was a week ago or two weeks ago, but hey, man, you catch the Vikings on, on that 1 p.m. slot. <laughs> like, you never know, man. You might be facing like Aaron Rodgers or something. So, exactly. That's kind of what I, I took away from it. Yeah, no, it was, it, it was crazy. And, you know, um, big respect to, to, to the Bears to, to try to, I mean, they, they made a game of it. You know, Kyler Gordon. Uh, the great uh, UW Husky uh, blocked the field goal when Minnesota was trying to come back in this game and ha- gave them some momentum, but it just wasn't enough. I mean, Chicago is not going to be competitive this year. I, I, I really, I mean, this was an, uh, a divisional game and and uh, they kept it close, but uh, they just don't have enough to keep it competitive. So, 
Shout out Justin Jefferson. He makes Kirk Cousins look good. <laughs> um, yeah, big time. I think he prays every night that he has Jefferson on his team to catch all his crazy throws. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, on to uh, Tennessee Titans beat our hometown Washington Commanders 21-17. to uh, The thing that stands out to me here, uh, so Washington's run defense, um, to me, they look like one of the best run defenses in the league. And I know that, that you know, if you look at the, 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 the stats, right, like don't let that, like Henry like ran for 102 yards, but it was on like 30 carries. And his touchdown runs were like at the goal line, and they were like, like he ran on first, didn't get it, ran on second, didn't get it, and then finally got it on third. Um, I think they have one of the best run defenses in the league, and that's really that's really all they have. What do you guys think? Carson Wentz blew that game at the end. He, yeah, and, and, and you know even that whole drive, like uh, I think before they even got close to the goal line. They were, uh, it was like second and second and two, third and two, fourth and two. And they were just, they kept throwing it, throwing it, throwing it. Like, I guess, I don't know if they don't believe in their running game or what, but they got lucky even getting close to the end zone, getting in the red zone. And then, again, just kept throwing, throwing, throwing. Like, they, you know, I know Brian Robinson is, is just coming back from that injury, but their, uh, their run game is just non-existent. Um, which... I think cost them that that game at the end by putting in Carson Wentz's hand and he can't finish. Yeah, and you know what's funny is um, if you if you that last sequence when they're like on the goal line or within like when they're it's person goal or whatever the pass bef- the pass at the very end bef- before he threw a pick he did the exact same thing on the pass right before we tried to squeeze it in through like a, a really short window like over the middle yeah. and I was like what are you doing dude and then like he did it again and threw the pick like at the very end <laughs> I know I, I know exactly what you're talking about he's like he, he thinks he can pinpoint it but he really can't yeah like why would you take like such a low percentage throw and try to like force it I don't know no. and then I, I agree with you on their run defense um, it's kind of if I didn't hate them so much, you know, I'd say that it was so. It's 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 sad that they're wasting this elite run. Like they have elite run deep defenders, like on that interior, yeah. and then you know they have they they might have the most talented based on just talent front line, like that front four. Like in, they're all first rounders. Oh yeah, you know? Alabama and, and yeah, big guys. And. I don't know. It just feels like they're 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 kind of wasting that opportunity. But I mean, what do you expect? This is the worst run organization, like top to bottom in the entire league. So nothing yep. really surprises me that comes out of there. Yeah, I agree. In that post game, I saw Carson Wentz kind of like smiling. It's like, what's this dude smiling? <laughs> Nash, and you have you won one game this year. Like, this guy needs to get serious. And start winning some games. Yeah, you know. Okay, so I'll address a few things. So number one, um, one of the admissions that Tennessee couldn't run the ball early is that they kept throwing the ball. So they kept throwing it to Dontrell Hilliard. They kept throwing it to to, to Derrick Henry in the beginning of the game because they couldn't get anything going with the run. A um, few things with Washington. Uh, Deami Brown all of a sudden became like a superstar for Washington. He had like two touchdowns, had like over 100 yards. I think Dotson was injured this game, maybe McLaurin as well. And this guy just, like, shone for them, you know? Uh, had, had a really, really good game. And then to address that running game point, Antonio Gibson, three carries for six yards. Three carries for six yards the entire game. Brian Robinson played was on, like, a, like a snap count, barely played any in this game, had nine carries for 22 yards. He's coming back from being shot. Uh, I think that this game, this uh, job is his. This is Brian Robinson's starting job. As he gets more comfortable and comes back next week, um, and then I think they're going to start using Gibson more as a receiver. Gibson played receiver when he was in uh, college, and he was like a really good receiver in college. I think that's where they're going to start using him as. Um, but to address this Carson Wentz point, uh, can you guys remember somebody going from uh, an MVP candidate to what Carson Wentz has become this quickly? 
I, I, not I, that quickly. Huh? Not that quickly, no. It's insane. It's in, I mean, Carson Wentz was all the way up here. I mean, he was like on that team, Philadelphia, that won the Super Bowl and like won them all those games. And then Nick Foles came over and 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 won the Super Bowl for them. But he was like an MVP MVP candidate. So I don't think I've ever seen this before. Um, this 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 rapid decline. So we'll see where Washington goes from here. But uh, on to the next game: the Buffalo Bills stomp the Pittsburgh Steelers. 38 to 3. Uh, uh, Sherry R is going to keep saying that it's Mike Tomlin, Mike Tomlin, Mike Tomlin needs to be fired. There's nothing Mike Tomlin could do about this. Um, some notes I had about this game. I didn't realize how good Gabe Jackson was. Or sorry, Gabe Davis was as the number two receiver on, on this team. He had a 98 yard touchdown to start the game and then another 62 yard one handed grab. Um, you know, th- this team was already a Super Bowl favorite, but this, like, if you have a second receiver like that, I mean, this really, really elevates them. I mean, who's going to win the Super Bowl if not them? Well, they're definitely favorites. And I think, like, I think like I mentioned to you earlier, it's, it's really funny because I don't think – so I actually don't think Josh Allen is, like, a smart player, but he's so, like, physically gifted that – you know, he can make these throws and get away with it because his arm is so crazy strong, right? Like, like the one, the second bomb that he had, Minka Fitzpatrick had that. Like, if he wants to replay, he had that, and then the receiver just, like, ripped it away from him. So they have, you know, I mean, obviously he's so gifted physically, and then you have the receivers. You have Diggs and Davis, but then even, like, Khalil Shaka, who, by the way, like, I wanted to draft. He looked good. Like, he looked good. Mm. And... Um, their running game solid, and then of course their defense is great. So, yeah, the Bills are definitely favorites. Um, I think this real quick on the other side, like with with the Steelers, I actually didn't think Kenny Pickett looked too bad, to be honest. I thought like for a rookie playing his second game, I thought he looked okay. Um, I think George Pickens is going to be a legit receiver, mm-hmm. um, but I just think that they're so talent deprived that they can't really hang. You know, it's 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 it. If they get to, like, seven wins, then that's a testament to how great Tomlin is. Like, regardless of what Sherry says, like, he just, I don't don't know what what his beef is here. But if they get to, like, seven wins, then I think, like, that's that's a testament to coaching. But they just don't have, they just don't have the horses right now. Yeah. Kenny Pickett, yeah, can take, but I, I agree with you. He does show promise, but he throwed more picks today. And, um, you know, Deont- he, he could have had a couple really good completions to Deontay Johnson. One of them, he was, his, his foot was out of bounds. Another one he dropped. Um, Deontay Johnson looks good, but he's just, he, doesn't, he hasn't worked out some of like the intricacy. I was talking about some earlier about DK Metcalf. Some of these guys are just like really, really raw and have a lot of skills. But it doesn't seem like they work on their craft in terms of becoming better receivers. Right. And I think Deontay Johnson is, is one of those guys for me. Um, and yeah, the story of this game is I think you might have seen th- like th- the best AFC team versus possibly the worst AFC team. I mean, honestly, my opinion on the Steelers is is very, very, very low. It's just not coming together for them. Thirty eight to three like this. I mean, not to be competitive in this kind of game. Um, uh, and yeah, and I think you saw and you mentioned also like the running backs. They have De- Devin Singletary and Zach Moss, but at the end of this game when they put James Cook in, he also had an amazing run. And I think in James Cook, you saw their running back of the future. That's just another one of the, the guys that I believe in. So um, they're very dangerous. A lot of weapons. A lot of weapons. Yeah. Okay. San Francisco 49ers starting the late window beat the Carolina Panthers 37-15. to The first note that I had in this game was that the Carolina Panthers defense looked hungry in the beginning. That's the first note that I had. Uh, but as the game went on, I mean, Debo continues to look great. Uh, and I have to say, as a Seahawks fan, as much as I hate to admit it, the Niners look like Super Bowl contenders. Um, and I don't think that they have like a truly great player, like a superstar. Like Debo might be like, like almost on that superstar level. Maybe he is a superstar. But other than that, it's just like 
a team that plays really, really, really well together and knows what they're knows who they are, and then they they execute it like perfectly, uh, especially on defense. I saw Debo Samuel drop a couple big passes. Uh, I, that was kind of my takeaway from him. He, he was pretty inconsistent today. Um, another thing on Carolina, Raheem Blackshear, Virginia Tech alum, had 200 yards, 200 return yards, uh, and took out the San Francisco kicker. He hit him twice oh. on the second one. He took him out the game. <laughs> but Raheem Blackshear, watch out. Remember his name. He's a running back out of Virginia Tech. He's on return duties now, but but look out for him to start running the ball. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I really like how you put it, that they they know who they are, and they try to stay true to that. And I think that's, like, top to bottom. You know, the, the, nobody plays outside of themselves, even, like, especially the quarterback, right? Like, Jimmy G knows what he is. He doesn't try to do too much all the time. And he kind of tries to be an elite game manager. And quite honestly, that's all he needs to do most of the time because their defense is so good. And he has weapons. And he has elite coaching, right? You have a coach who can scheme open players and put them in in the best position to succeed. Do you think if Debo went to any other team, he would be as weaponized as he is in San Francisco? I don't think so. Like, I don't think as many people are creative enough to use him, you know, as like a web back, as a running back, out of the back, like all the stuff that they do with him. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think the Niners, maybe this is like an early not to take, but I think the Niners might be the, right now, right now, they might be the best team in the conference. Because, I kind of agree. I kind of agree. <laughs> because like, there might be better quarterbacks. There might be better like specific like players on other teams. <clears throat> but yeah, man, they are so true to their identity, and like they're gonna come in and they're gonna punish you. Like they're gonna punish you on the ground. They're gonna punish you on defense, and they do not back down. So yeah, they 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 look like it to me. Yeah, big time, big time. Yeah, we'll see. I hate to see it. Uh, they're on top of the NFC West now. Um, but uh, luckily, thankful to your Dallas Cowboys for beating the Los Angeles Rams twenty-two to ten to to even out that uh, that uh, division. Um, I'll just start by saying the Dallas defense looked fantastic. What do you think, OY? Yeah, um, we we were just I was just talking about this to some of my boys um, or with my boys. It's this is the best defense that we have personally seen. This century, right? In the last, like, 20, 23 years, this is the best defense that we've seen probably since, like, the mid to late 90s, since, like, the end of that run. Because, let's be real here, our front office, our owner is so obsessed with, like, marketing and, you know, selling tickets and, like, selling the team, right, to other people. So, obviously, you know, it's all about offense and, you know, promoting that side of the ball. And what, what's happened is it, it, it's been a detriment to us and it's cost us at least having like solid to good defenses over the years, even when we had elite offenses. But now it's kind of flipped a little bit. And, you know, this is the first team, this is the first defense since the 1972 team that has given up five touchdowns total in their first five games. And <clears throat> that's pretty elite considering, you know, that 72 team or those 70s teams had one of the greatest defenses in history. So, I mean, I am very, like, impressed with this defense because I feel very confident when that defense is on the field that, okay, we can win the game with this defense. Like, you know, I was just raving about the Niners. I think we might have, like, the second-best defense in the league. Right now I'd still give it to them just because of experience and everything because they've been doing it longer, but – I, I think, you know, this defense is, is it's coming. And I think I think we have maybe a top three player in the league on that defense. And he can mm-hmm. single-handedly wreck the game. And so mm-hmm. when you can win games with, with your backup quarterback who had like 100 yards and no touchdowns today, and you still win the game, I think that mm-hmm. speaks volumes. And you go into the house of the defending Super Bowl champions – who even if they're not as good this year, like they still have that pride, you know. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so this was a very impressive win. I'm very impressed with the defense because now I don't have to worry about, oh, my God, the defense is doing this. Defense. No, no, they can win you the game. So I feel, at least right now, at least without our quarterback, I, I might feel more confident when the defense is on the field. Mm-hmm. And I think that, and, and you know, like, you know, you've gone through this with like having an elite defense, like mm-hmm. that's a very comforting thought when you feel comfortable with your defense. On big, the time. big time, big time. Yeah. Um, I will say basically offense in this game, Tony Pollard had a big t- TD run. Cooper cup had a big TD run. And that was about it for offense in this game. And you know, I, I don't, I, I don't think you have to worry about the conversation about will Cooper Rush take over for Dak, because I think, I think he kind of ended that today. He didn't, he didn't do, he didn't need to do much, but he didn't, he didn't really do anything. Yeah. 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 So. But hey, like you know, like kudos to him. He's for him, it's a remarkable story. Like he just made himself a lot of money in these last five games. So. Yeah. Um, even if you know, even if he didn't do much, still, still happy for him, obviously. Yeah. What did you think, Besson? Uh, I saw a really nice catch from Michael Gallup. Um, I think he, I actually like him better as a receiver over CD. Mm-hmm. Like I was talking about last week, uh, you know, CD Lamb. I think he's real, you know, quick and shifty and can run good routes. But as an overall receiver and catching ability, I think Gallup has a step above him. Um, yeah, I saw that Cooper Cup long run, very impressive. Matt Stafford just keeps coughing up the ball, whether it be interception. I think he had like either one or two fumbles today. Um, not looking good for him, especially coming off that Super Bowl year. Yeah. Uh, I, I had him on my team too in fantasy, dropped him this past week. He's not, he hasn't been doing anything this year. He's, yeah, I'm not even keeping him on the bench. He's gone. Yeah. So I think Stafford needs to step it up if he, if he uh, Wants to do anything to start winning games. Stop coughing up the ball. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, Stafford has such a long, long, tortured career in in Detroit that he's just so weathered at this point. You know, like he got what yeah. he needed last year in the Super Bowl, and he can retire happy. You know, but it does look like the elbow issues. Like he has like really bad elbow uh, or shoulder or elbow or whatever um, that prevent him from like. Like whatever, keeping the ball and being able to continue to throw the ball effectively. So, yeah, we'll see. I mean, when we get to the to the hot take, I'm going to tell you uh, something else about this team. But anyway, moving on to the last game of the late window, the Philadelphia Eagles beat the Arizona Cardinals, twenty to seventeen. My first take here is that Jalen Hurts is Justin Fields on steroids. Uh, <laughs> but when he, when when Jalen Hurts decides to run, he completely commits to the run he he doesn't like evade and get out of the pocket and look around and try to find like an open receiver he just puts his head down and just runs um Devonta Smith he caught almost everything that was thrown at him. I think he was like eight for eight to start and that ended up with 10 receptions even though he's a small guy he's he's been uh, a reliable receiver for for Jalen um and he, I feel like even though even when he gets blindsided or just completely smothered after you know after the catch, he still holds on to the ball. He doesn't cough it up. That's a you know former Heisman winner. There's a reason why he's uh, in the position he is. So I also got him on my team. But yeah, he's been doing really good. Um, I believe in Jalen too, man. I'm happy he got that win. And uh, yeah, what are they four and one now? Five and zero. Oh. Five and zero. Oh, oh. oh, yeah. Five and zero, yeah. So undefeated, undefeated, last undefeated team in the league. Um, well deserved. Kyler Murray, he's another guy. My takeaway from him is just he's. I think he's like the shiftiest, quickest. Like I don't, I don't see anyone else in the league that moves like he does. Yeah. Like you can't. It's like you can't sack this guy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, that's one thing he has going for him. Like you think you uh, you beat the the O lineman and try to get to him. Nope, he somehow slithers out and and gets the ball either to the go or to the uh, you know throws it away or or you know can do something with it. So yeah, that was impressive. one. 
That was one of my notes too. It's, it's shocking every time he gets sacked. You know, every time that somebody's able to get to him, he's not able to evade. It shocks me. Um, I thought Hollywood Brown continues to be like a really good addition for them. Um, Arizona finally ended their streak of uh, sucking in the first half, and they actually kept it competitive in the first half. Um, but they did keep the streak alive of having like really close, exciting games. This was like a game all the way until the end. Um, and late in the fourth quarter, um, the way this game ended, Kyler spiked the ball on a third and one, not knowing that they didn't have the first down and no timeouts left. So they had, they were left with fourth and one with no timeouts and they had to kick a field goal. So that was really poor management. And then that Arizona, they had like a replacement kicker, Amendola. Uh, they showed him. In, in pregame warm-ups, he kept kicking the ball right, kicking the ball right, kicking the ball right. And you're in like a dome, dude. Like, th- like there's no reason for you to continue to kick the ball right. Uh, but he had the game on the line, or to tie it or whatever, and he did it again. Kicked it wide right the same way, really wide right. And, um, yeah, I mean, oh, why you can talk about this. Philadelphia, 5-0, and still the only defeated, undefeated team in the league, and they face the Cowboys next Sunday night in a huge game. Yeah, big, big, huge game. Um, I think, like, what I got from Phil, I mean, they're definitely a good team. They're definitely loaded. Um, the roster is definitely talented on both on both sides. I, I think the offense is getting a lot of the notoriety. I think the defense might actually be better. But one thing I noticed in this game was their offense can kind of be had a little bit. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think, like, they're unstoppable. I think kind of like you said, like, Jalen Hurts, like if you get him to run, like he's gonna run, you know. He's and I think like the trick to them, like with a lot of these dual threat quarterbacks, is to you know keep him contained, don't let him escape, make him beat you from the pocket. I don't know if he can do that on a consistent basis. Having said that, I think that if they're allowed to run the offense that they run, you know the RPOs and things like that, then they can be very dangerous. So that's kind of like one thing that I, that stood out to me. And the second was, <laughs> I was so mad. I was mad for Arizona fans. When, like, bro, why did you slide like a yard short of the sticks? Like, you had enough time to where you could have tried to get that yard. And if you don't get it, then you get up and do whatever, you know? Um, I, I think it's just poor situational awareness. And I guess like the... Cardinals didn't suck in the first half, but I guess they sucked like when it mattered this time. You know, yeah. it's just kind of like they reversed it. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. kicker, I think his name is uh, Matt Amon Dole. He's the guy that Kansas City cut earlier this year because he he I think missed the field goal and, and an extra point and kind of blew <laughs> a really close game for him. So I think that dude's off this team too. He's he's that was yeah. he got a second shot in one year and I think he's done. He's he's like a. Uh, he's like a, some kind of agent. He's working for somebody like that's against <laughs> these teams or whatever, right? He's, he's, he he just sure. loses them games. Just loses whatever games, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to that Sunday night game next week. But, um, yeah, moving on to this this game that's going on right now. I haven't actually been watching. I guess it's in the fourth quarter now. But uh, Baltimore and Cincinnati. So my takeaway from the first half, uh, Lamar, you know, he, he, th- he threw like a two-yard pass on a third and long. He was using Duvernay and Andrews as kind of a safety blanket. My thoughts on Lamar are kind of well well uh, documented here. Uh, he just he uses players as safety blankets, and he continues to do that. And, and Baltimore was kind of keeping them in this game. But Cincinnati looked to me like they were the, the more uh, well-rounded team. It was 10-10 going into the halftime. I guess it's 13-10 now. Have you guys, uh, do you guys have any thoughts about this game? Um, I mean, I'm kind of I'm watching it right now. Yeah. Harbaugh was about to go for another fourth and in inches, um, but now he's kicking a field goal. Yeah. Um, it's I, so I I had actually picked the Bengals to win this game. Um, I th- I felt like the first two weeks, it, it feels like they're kind of taking some time to get to know who they are a little bit. Um, I, I definitely think that they probably overachieved last year. I think they got a little hot, you know, at the right time. And, Things kind of fell their way, but I, I think the team has a lot of talent. And like, if I look at it, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like their offense compared to the Baltimore offense is a lot better. 
the issue here is that I think Harbaugh is a much better coach. I think um, Baltimore obviously has a home field tonight. So I don't know. It's it, it's going to be interesting. It's a six point game right now, so we'll see what they do. Yeah. That's many final thoughts about this game. Did you see the first half? I did not. No. Okay. I've, I've been kind of just glancing at it right now. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. I, I, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think Cincinnati is the overall better team, but Baltimore has the better coach. And um, I don't know. I have, I have a lot of annoying Baltimore fans in, in, in some of my chats, and I, I just root against. Them. I have to, I just root against them sometimes, honestly, because of how much they love uh, Lamar and they think Lamar is the savior. And um, I don't get it. I really don't get it. I, I mean, I think they'll be happier with 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 Tyler Huntley. So um, they have said he just woke up. <laughs> Too, too late, buddy. Anyway, so we're, we're, we're going to finish this off with um, with the hottest take, the Nar take. I'm going to get some like emojis and just like put some fire stuff in here too, so it just uh, makes it cooler. But it can be uh, like the flaming the the Elmo fire thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I'll incorporate that. Okay, so I'll start with mine, and then you guys can can if you have yours, you can think of yours. So Baker May- Mayfield was benched today for the Panthers at the end of this game. And he was replaced by P.J. Walker. I didn't even know P.J. Walker was their backup, but apparently Sam Darnold and uh, the other guy, Cole something, um, are both on IR. I didn't I didn't realize that. But anyway, he was replaced by P.J. Walker. And so my hot take is that P.J. Walker starts next week, gives them a spark, and they beat the Rams next week at Los Angeles. I think this team has good offensive weapons that have been held back by Baker. You're talking about, of course, Christian McCaffrey, Chubba Hubbard, uh, DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson. They have a lot of really good weapons, even so their, their tight ends. Um, and Baker Mayfield has just been holding them back. And I think that P.J. Walker gives them the spark, and then they spank the Rams next week at Los Angeles. My hot take. You guys have any hot takes? I got to get better at this. You're pretty good at this. Um, I think, so not, a, it's not as hot, but I think, and you guys might have talk, talked about this when I stepped out. I might have missed it, but I think Brian Dable is a great coach. Like, f- from what I've seen so far. You know, from what I've seen so far. And that's not easy for me to say, but like, I think he's a heck of a coach. And I say this every week. I think the Giants are the worst four one team in the history of the NFL. And I still think that. Mm. But, you know, to have that team, uh, you know, a lack of talent, questionable at quarterback, to have them, you know, at four and one, uh, and you know they beat the Packers today. Um, you know, it, it's kind of a testament to to the coaching, and I would say right now that he is probably the front runner for coach of the year. So that's that's I guess that's my hot take. You know, mm-hmm. it's, if I had a vote, it would be for Brian Dable um, for what he's doing right now. Solid. I agree. I agree. Very, very surprising. Him and also Robert Saleh, those New York teams, what they're doing is, is, is pretty impressive. I agree. You got anything better? I got, a, I got a little bit of a warm take. Not too hot. It's probably actually a pretty common uh, thought. Okay. But, Commanders, if you guys want to win some games, bench Carson Wentz. I think the backup is Taylor Heineke. Mm-hmm. Put him in. See what he can do. But Carson Wentz is just horrible, so... Uh, bench him, see what the other guy can do, and, and go from there. Uh, real, yeah. Real quick, do you think do you think this is Wentz's last like chance in the NFL? I think he's a backup next year, for sure, hundred percent. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think he's he's played his way out of the league. But yeah, I think a lot of people in Washington uh, agree they want to see Heineke, or they drafted a guy too. I forget who what his name is, but. Uh, um. Cole something or it's something in my mind right now. Yeah. Come to me. He was another one. Matt, Matt Coral is it Matt Coral? Matt Coral, yeah. Is that him? They actually got they actually got a really good value for him. I think they yeah. got him like late. Yeah, uh, I, I, it was in the mid rounds. I can't remember what, what what round actually, but I thought it was good value when they selected him. So if it was me, you're like one and four. Why not? I mean, what do you got to lose? You know, yeah. I mean, they're not going to do that obviously because they think they can still make a run, but. Yeah. If it was me, like I'm putting the kid in. Yeah. 
I agree. Is Wentz getting paid big time or something, or what? I don't know how much he's getting paid. I don't know if it's big time. Uh, because, I mean, Colts pretty much just kind of let him go because they got Matt Ryan. So there's like a carousel of like average quarterbacks that keep moving around every year. But, yeah, I agree. I think a lot of people in Washington agree with you. They want to see something else. Um, and then, But I also think, like I said, Ryan Robinson, it, once, he, once he gets going, he's going to be a real spark to this team. So maybe he would have been the difference today if he was you know, more healthy, had more reps. So... I want to thank you guys for jumping on for this week five recap. Uh, again, I'll end it with uh, if you guys have anything to plug, uh, the floor is yours to plug whatever you would like to plug. That's me, That's, man. Shout out Football for You Football Podcast. Follow, like, subscribe. Uh, soccer fan, American football fan. Check it out for, uh, for all the best and, and recaps. Follow football, be football. Yeah, so I'm going to shout out uh, Coconut Oud. Check that out. <laughs> Hit him up and order yourself some Oud. Nice. There you go. I like that. I like that. Supporting each other. I love it, thank man. You, thank you. I love it. Thank you guys again. I appreciate it. So um, if you'd like to follow this podcast, we're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. You can watch it on YouTube. You can also listen to it and watch it on Spotify and Anchor. And you can support it on Kofi. So that was the Week 5 NFL Recap Roundtable. Appreciate you guys jumping on. Appreciate everyone listening. And have a fantastic day, football fans.